night on KGW News. Tragedy averted. A school bus bursts into flames just after all the kids are dropped off. Plus... This is my city and this is my home and my home is sick. Another local business owner at her wit's end as thieves take off with her livelihood. And amid that record crime, city leaders pledge more help for Portland's first responders. We are asking them to do too much with the number of people that we have on the streets. Your news starts now. And we begin tonight with that new resolve from city leaders to better support emergency responders. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. The mayor saying today dwindling resources can't be an excuse for not helping people in trouble. It was all part of a city council meeting. Catherine Cook was listening in and joins us now, Catherine. You guys, those remarks came after Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle presented the police bureau's annual report. It touched on record crime stats officers leaving the bureau and the frustratingly slow process of hiring new ones. At the Portland Police Bureau, I can say the challenges have been the most significant of our careers. On Wednesday, Chief Chuck Lavelle laid it all out for City Council. The Police Bureau's 2021 report touched on the highest volume of car thefts in city history at 9,216, a record number of homicides at 90, and there was another number, 229. Between retirements and resignations, Lavelle says that's how many sworn officers have left the police bureau since July of 2020. We've lost a great deal of historical and institutional knowledge. And even though we're talking about 2021, I can say that we continue to most days not meet our minimum staffing on the street. The city is hiring more police now. Most recently, 37 sworn officers and seven public safety support specialists. But a backlog at the State Academy means it could take close to a year before those officers are on the streets. And crime isn't holding its breath. Mayor Ted Wheeler acknowledged that. First responders need the tools, the resources, the training, and the personnel to be able to do their jobs effectively and safely. That does not mean there should not be accountability. There should be that too. It's a both and, it's not an either or. It's quite a departure from the summer of 2020. That's when city council, including Mayor Wheeler, voted to approve cutting $15 million from the police bureau, eliminating 84 sworn staff positions. The cuts came amid racial justice protests calling to defund the police. Some fear the move would jeopardize public safety. Now, Wheeler says, it's about looking ahead. Yeah, we want to be transparent. We have now acknowledged we have a staffing shortage. Let's stop talking about that. Let's stop talking about our inability to respond to crime in the community. Let's stop advertising to criminals that they're going to get away with it. Because I don't believe that and I don't want them to. We've got to figure out better ways to address this crisis. We have to be innovative. We have to bring different types of people. And he was very articulate in saying that the police bureau alone cannot solve that problem. Police union president Aaron Schmaltz listened in on city council and appreciates the mayor's approach. What I was hearing him say today is because of that reality on the ground, because of the fact that we cannot provide police service the way that we really want to yet because our, our staffing is so low, we need to build up other options and we need to find ways to offload some of the work that the police officers in the street are doing so that they can focus on the things that are really, really pressing. You know, Catherine, it really sounds like the police and the mayor are on the same page here. They're talking about innovation, other options, but when it comes to the mayor, what's he going to do about it and when? Right. Well, good question, David. And the mayor didn't propose any specific solutions today, but said they need to, quote, run toward the crisis and come up with concrete solutions with what they've got right now. And he says that includes strengthening their recruiting process. But again, a big issue here is how long it will take officers to get to be street ready. And it's not just the police bureau. The mayor says police, fire, and 911 communications are all woefully understaffed. You know, concrete solutions now, that is the thing. Thank mm -hmm. you, Catherine. It's, it's lawless. It's completely lawless, and there's no consequences right now. A Portland business owner hopes those solutions come soon. She aired her frustrations with us today after her rental truck full of equipment vanished. 
Alma McCarty found out she's now out thousands of dollars, compromising her already struggling business. Alma? Laurel, and that's not to mention, Amy Thiegberg tells me it took her several hours to even file that police report. And she knows she's not the only one. Every day, a new theft and a story like hers. All across the Rose City, festivals and fairs like this weekend's in the Hawthorne neighborhood are made possible by dedicated organizers, vendors and events businesses. I bet you if you did something outside fun this summer, we had something to do with it on some level. Amy Theberg owns Block Party Barricades, which supplies the roadblocks and signs. We work for um, nonprofit events mostly that are doing any kind of street closures. So from anything from a block party to a street painting to a community festival like Rose Festival, Shamrock Run, things like that. It's been a rocky two years. No events due to COVID, living paycheck to paycheck without PPP funding. She's fought tooth and nail this summer to get her business back up and running. Up until this point, we have basically just been hanging on by a thread. And now she faces yet another obstacle. U-Haul was parked here in front of these trees. After thieves stole a rented van with $10,000 worth of her equipment inside following the Hawthorne Street Fair Sunday. We got a crew to come back here to unload it. Um, the truck was left and then the crew came and the truck was gone. Despite our best efforts of trying to track it down and track down equipment, we have not been successful yet with the U-Haul or the equipment. The equipment Amy does have stored in her North Portland warehouse isn't nearly enough. I have to make those phone calls to all the businesses that are coming, their events are coming this weekend to say, sorry, Art in the Pearl, sorry, First Thursday, sorry, other block parties and street paintings that are happening for Labor Day weekend. We don't have the stuff to fulfill your order. As frustrated as she is, hoping to recover it all as the events season comes to a close, Amy says she's far from the only one dealing with thefts and crime. I just want some accountability and I want things to change so that these events can go forward so small businesses like mine can just survive, let alone thrive. And I want people to feel safe here. It should not be too much to ask. As for that stolen U-Haul, it's 15 feet long with Arizona plates reading AD 15811. David? Countability and things to change. That's what she says. Thank you, Alma. We've got some new information tonight on a fatal shooting during a street racing event over the weekend. Police say this man, 20-year-old Cameron Taylor, died after he was shot. Video posted to Twitter shows gunfire near one of those street takeovers. It appears to be from the same location Taylor was shot, Marine Drive over I-5. Now, Taylor's family tells us he was not a street racer. He went to the event to check out the cars. They say he was trying to leave when he was hit by a stray bullet. Police say two other people were injured. No word yet on any arrests. Wow, look at this. Thankfully, all students are safe after this happened. On the first week of school, a school bus with a Toledo school district that's in Lewis County, Washington, caught fire. All of the students had already been dropped off. The district says the driver was turning around when exhaust from the bus set the nearby dry grass on fire and then the flames spread. The driver was not hurt. Thank goodness for that. Tonight we have a follow up years in the making. You may remember two years ago, Portland area voters approved a massive housing bond to help people get off the streets and into housing. Now we are getting our first look at the results of year one of that money at work. A reminder, the bond raised taxes on high income earners and big businesses. It is the first year in its first year, I should say, collected $200 million. Metro, the agency handling it, says it's spent about 56 million so far. Now, in that time, they have housed over 1,100 people in Multnomah County, 340 in Washington, 170 in Clackamas. More than 9,000 people in Multnomah County received eviction protection, 66 in Washington County. They've also opened 514 new year-round shelter beds across the region. The fund also covers what is called permanent supportive housing. KGW's Blair Best talked to one woman, Jessica Perry, who'd been homeless for nine years but now has an apartment. She says the fund paid for her first and last month's rent and helped with her move. I wake up every day and I love coming to work. I wake up ready to go. And I mean, I haven't worked in nine or ten years at this point, and I love it. I love being able to go home and pay my bills and, you know, just enjoy my being inside and all the 
awesome little perks that come with it that <laughs> you don't realize are important until you don't have them. Now Metro's 10 year goal is to house at least 5,000 people experiencing homelessness and to help at least 10,000 who are either newly homeless or at extreme risk of becoming homeless.